All right, everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at how to set up the arm with the transformation limit. Um, so I'm gonna show you two ways that you can do it. I'm just gonna bring in a first um, transformation limit right here to show you the first method. Um, so we'll have this one here, uh, and this is one thing that you can do. You don't necessarily have to do it inside of your rig, but it can be pretty handy, especially with uh, really bouncy shows where you want to uh, squash down uh, the entire upper body, let's say. Um, because I've already set the head to not move, kind of like right now, if I want to scale this, it's not necessarily going to move, but if I want to squash things down a little bit, um, the arms do. They squash down along with the body. So one thing I can do is set the transformation limit on the arm itself. So I'll bring that over here and connect it just above the arm. I'll get into my layer properties. Again, I'll set this as the master peg. You need to make sure that it's the right uh, naming convention for the top peg that you don't want to, um, that you want to set as the limit of uh, your transformation limit. And for this one, I'm going to turn off the scaling for both of them, skew rotate and I'm going to leave those right here to then go over here. If I set the arm like this, for instance, I'm going to go and take the entire upper body and if I move things like this, you can see that the arm actually stays straight instead of tilting along with the rest of the body. So it's, we've turned off the scale on this one as well. So if I squash down the body like so, and I want to get something that's a bit more bouncy, I can set the transformation limit right here to help with that. So just like this one right here, it's not going to do like the other arm here and uh, scale along with the rest. So it can be pretty handy if you want to get uh, one of those really bouncy things. Um, but also, yeah, you know, keep the orientation of uh, your arm at all time, kind of like with the head. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys with the arm, again, um, with the purpose of kind of getting rid of, uh, well, let's call it double pegging. Right here we have the forearm, the arm, um, and these are essentially for what, these two pegs? We're using them pretty much to just uh, create a little, shorter version to kind of scale down the arm right here and be able to shorten the arm if we need to uh, to to change the shape of that limb. So let's just reset those for the purpose of setting the, uh, the transformation limits right here. I'm going to go back and get my transformation limit. Set that one right here in the third port again. Um, one thing that we don't want to forget, and we actually didn't do it over on this one, is that we want to set the pivot point of the arm. It was pretty close, so it didn't show too much. But for the transformation limit, try to take, get into the habit of just setting it every time that you position one. So I'm going to just show this one right here. And I'll set this one at the elbow. So for the transformation limit right here, I've set it between the arm and the forearm. I want the forearm and everything attached under it to not be affected by what's above it. So the arm right here is going to be, um, is going to be the one I set for that. Um, basically the idea here is that we want to be able to scale the arm without scaling the forearm. So I'm actually going to leave the rotation for this one and just turn off the scale for both values and the skew. So I'm gonna leave it like that and um, just try now to scale that down. And you can see, maybe you'll see it a little bit better if I actually rotate it here and scale it down. 
can see that the forearm is not being affected by the scale. So it kind of makes this one a little bit more useless now that you have it there. Um, and it avoids having more, um, you know, pressing B and shift B to move around in the hierarchy. This is going to be one less, so we can just get rid of it. And um, of course, you also want to make sure that you, uh, you set a parent right here. Um, because of this one is not necessarily um, the, you know, the, it's not necessarily going to be affected by a lot more than the arm right here. You could probably just connect this one to the arms master right here, allowing for both of them to, um, to just stop at that point. Um, I'm going to go to the forearm master and do the same thing with the hand right here. And I'll just go ahead into my node library, bring in another transformation limit. If you don't necessarily want to bring one in, you can always duplicate this one. I'll just go right here, nodes, duplicate. I'll connect it underneath. And I'm just going to hide because uh, the control is going to be in the exact same place right here. And again, I'll just reset. And let's show the control for this one. We'll set it at the hand. It doesn't need to be exactly on the pivot point, but try to keep it pretty close to where it is. So we have that here. Our transformation limit is set. We have the rest of the settings right here that have been duplicated along with it. So now if I scale my arm, my forearm rather, it's not going to affect the hand. So right now I'll be able to go over here, move that if I want to do a little, a little bit shorter, I can do that. If I want to change this one, make it a little bit shorter, I can do that as well and be able to, um, to move around the different assets without being affected by the scale. So now this peg right here becomes useless. I can get rid of it. I don't need it to create a shorter version of the arm and it makes it that much easier to navigate through the arm as well by just pressing B, B, B and being able to, uh, to access all these things without necessarily um, going through all the different ones. So right now it makes it a little bit longer because I have deformation on these arms. Um, if I had a standard rig without the deformation, uh, it would go that much faster. But of course, depending on the style that you're doing, you can make uh, certain things a little bit differently. So this is a pretty, uh, a pretty cool setup. Again, we can just hook that up to the arms master right here and we could do the same thing for the other arm. So you guys can go ahead with that exercise and we'll move on to uh, the next one where we'll see how the spring works. We'll see that in the next video.